Good afternoon. I'm Kai Yoon again. Um, my training background is in naturopathic medicine and Chinese medicine. Um, I graduated from Bastyr University in Seattle, and currently I have a private practice in Coralville. And today we get to the fun part, which is the treatment modalities. Um, and um, the next lecture, which at the very end of today, I will give you a um, kind of a preview of, as to what we're going to talk about in the le next lecture. Many of you might have seen this cartoon before, but I think it's it's quite hilarious, <laughs> and <That's cool. laughs> and people are still trying to research and find out how does acupuncture work. You know, is it placebo? Is it trial and error? And I think this cartoon just illustrates that perfectly. We have meridians or channels that flow through the body. I have uh, acupuncture men here. You see all these dots on him? Those are acupoints. And we have well over 365 points in our whole entire body, if not more. And they're all connected by these things called channels. And you can think of them as highway system or freeway system. You know, you got the Interstate 80 here or whatnot. And, um, and Qi is the vehicle that drives on these channels or freeway system. And this is a very delicate network or roadmap. And if Qi gets stuck somewhere, let's say a traffic jam, then it creates um, pain or a dysfunction in how our body function. And what acupuncture do is try to open up that congestion. So let's say if somebody were to come in with a neck stiffness, you know, rather than just treating the neck itself, we also we look at the person as a whole. We look at how the meridians and channel flow. So there's actually one point that I've tried, I've you know done on all my patients, and it has opened up their range of motion immediately. And that point is actually located in the arm. And you will think, why would you treat the arm for the neck? Well, you have to take into consideration that we, our body is connected by this flow of um, freeway, <laughs> if you will. Yep. And, and in fact, the other day, I had one guy who had an injury to his neck, and he could only turn his neck about 10 degrees like this. And after that one point, he turned it, like, it opened up right away. And when I asked him, how long have you not been able to turn your neck? And he said, 45 years. <laughs> so acupuncture got popular well, over, all over the world somehow except America. It was only in 1972, a uh, American journalist, James Reston, I believe he was either with Nixon or Kissinger, and he went to China, and um, on his way back, he had an emergency um, appendectomy, and then he was hospitalized, and then after his surgery, um, he was complaining about stomach pain, and so he re received acupuncture for the first time. And when he came back, he did a few articles in New York Times and stating about his experience and how amazing it was just by a turn of the needle, he could feel his sort of um, stomach kind of, the, the tension kind of started to ease. And so, so that's why in America, a lot of the research has been focused on pain relief. Is it endorphins or is it placebo? It's still quite a debate, but there are recent um, research that have shown, well, if you look at the system, statistics, it's actually more effective than placebo. So there's a possibility there, but yet it, it's still difficult to study acupuncture. So why is it difficult? First of all, we can't see the meridians. You know, we take anatomy classes. You, you look at the, the cadaver, but you cannot see the meridian and channel flow. And, and what about qi? <laughs> Some people can feel chi, but how do you describe it? Or you know, it, so that way, if you can not visualize it, it's a little bit difficult to make a control study. And secondly, um, any one point has an effect throughout the body. So just like the example we said, 
treating the neck pain in the arm or the, the journalist, he had a um, stomach ache, but then they tr treated the leg. And so any one point has an effect on the whole body, then you cannot isolate a segment and say, OK, let's just test on this point and see what it does. Because our body is all connected in this ro roadmap system. I hope one day that you know the science, we can find out more about this thousands years old mystery. <laughs> Last time I brought up a important concept of Chinese medicine and that is the harmony of sky and human. So no matter what methods we use, we have to come back to the basic foundation that human and sky is one harmony and we don't look at leg pain and just focus on the leg. We look at the whole picture. So enough about acupuncture. It's only one part of Chinese medicine. There are so many other modalities that I hope we can cover it all today. First of all, it's called moxa. And moxa goes hand in hand with needle. So how big is the needle? Big. Big. <laughs> Here's a match. Here's a medical syringe. And this is the acupuncture needle. I will just show you how flexible and thin it is. You might not see it clear, but it's almost like, like, like a hair. They come all in single packet sterile, single use, and when you, after you use them, you throw them away. They come with, they're attached to a tube here, and I break the tube so it's loose, and then I put it on the skin and I tap really fast. And that fast action with the insertion of needle, people usually don't feel anything. Let's move on to moxa. Moxa, well, there's a term in Chinese called zhen jiu. Zhen jiu, people talked about it all the time as if they were talking about acupuncture. But when you divide the two words separately, zhen means needle, jiu means moxa. And I don't know why they, they're long lost twin. <laughs> they're, they're supposed to be together. And um, jiu is a type of herb um, made from mugwort, or um, in Chinese we call ai ye. Um, the parts used, it's, it's leaf. There's lots of um, tiny hair on the leaf. When it's dried and all the hair is um, taken out, it becomes this. It's like a puffball. And they use this to, um, they light it up to create a heat therapy. So you can either have a direct moxa therapy or an indirect moxa therapy. So direct, they would basically place this um, on an acupuncture point. They would light it until you feel the warmth and they remove it before it burns your skin. Or they could put a medium, for example, there's a method where they put salt on the belly button and so, th so you have an insulator almost and then on top of it they put this p uh, moxa and then they light it. And this is supposed to kind of warm your, your middle gel or like the central digestive system. Or they could be um, made into like a cigar and then burnt kind of uh, maybe a couple inch away so you feel the heat. Mm -hmm. So, um, and right now technology has made the cigar into smoke or smokeless. Um, and I bought a smokeless one They've charcoalized the moxa, so when this is burned, it doesn't give off the usual fume that it does, and um, it's uh, much sort of uh, safer when you are in the enclosed room. Otherwise, you get um, all the fume. Cupping. Yeah. Yes. Gwyneth Paltrow and Olympic athletes love cupping. This is 2004. She showed up to some sort of party and. And you see these marks, people are like, oh, what's that? And there are a couple methods where you just kind of run along and create a redness. And there are cupping methods where you leave the cup on for a certain amount of time. And from the color of her back, I would say they probably leave it on for at least 
well over a minute. Um, and why do they do that? There are many different um, sort of principles behind it. That is mainly to open up her channel because she's an athlete and there's a lot of stagnation when she's um, during the competition. And so there are different types of cupping methods. And with that, I have some cups. And so what, how this work is uh, traditionally you light a fire and you kind of go in a little bit and come out so it creates, uh, it empties the oxygen and it creates a suction. And this immediately goes on the body. And um, you could either leave it there or kind of roll it. And it does feel like a massage. Um, and there are kind of newer, newer design for it where it doesn't require the fire to create a suction. Um, it's a plastic cup. And you got this little pump here, and you could pump air out. The second therapy is called gua sha. Gua in Chinese means scrape. Sha means sand. And why do they call it the sand? Is because you see all these little red dots? Those are reactions when, um, particularly if somebody has a, a pain or stagnation somewhere, and the scraping method goes across, then it lights up. And um, in a Western sense, um, you could think of it as bringing blood circulation to the problem area and promote healing. In the Eastern sense, it is actually um, opening up the qi flow. Um, gua sha therapy is especially well known to um, relieve heat stroke in the summer and also relieve uh, muscle and aches in the back. And then the last part of the manual therapy is called tui na. Tui means push, na means pull. And so it's a method where you use your hand, elbow, a lot. And um, in China, and when you go to the traditional Chinese hospital, they have acupuncture ward and tui na ward, where they only do tui na, cupping, and gua sha. So tui na, there are so many different um, methods, and you use a lot of your hands, either using a thumb. I've seen one guy, he used the side of the, um, uh, the palm, <laughs> exactly. And this method can be used on um, kids. So some kids, they, they cannot take acupuncture. So they use these methods to kind of, it's almost like the light massage on their back because all the points relate to either boosting the immune system or, or um, helping them improve digestion. So there are acupoints that they do twina, twina on. And um, one interesting uh, personal experience, I was in Shanghai interning at the Shanghai Traditional Chinese Medicine Hospital. And one day we had a guest lecturer who is a master Tuinaist. <laughs> and he was um, trained in Shaolin Temple. And, um, and that day I happened to have a um, bad wrist and, I, and we were practicing Tuina on each other, but my wrist was so painful that I couldn't do the motions. And um, it was during break, I went to him and I said, I, I have this you know, bad wrist and can I make an appointment with you? And he was like, seeing is believing. I will help you right now. <laughs> and guess what, he used a thumb. He rubbed on some herbal salve, he used a thumb, and I, I didn't feel anything, and it was like about, I was, count, I was looking at the clock, it was about a minute after the pain disappeared. I was like, wow, how do you do it? He said, it's secret. <laughs> it's, it's like 40 years worth of training and, and knowledge and Shaolin Temple, so there's a lot of, um, uh, masters out there, <laughs> yeah. So it's amazing, Tuina, it's, it looks like just the hand, but uh, I'm sure they utilize Qigong and, and type of um, Qi into what they're doing. Okay, herbs. Oh, this is a huge, huge topic. Um, I'll start off by telling you a little story of um, 
the beginning of China. Um, this guy you see here with the horn uh, and eating a, a leaf, his name is Shen Nong. He was um, kind of a mystical type of person, but Chinese people believe that he was the first emperor. And um, the first emperor wasn't a politician. <laughs> he was really, really kind to his people. He taught them how to farm. He taught them what kind of plants that they can use to help um, help their strengthen their body or um, to detox from any accidental poison that they take. And so Shenlong was believed that he carries this whip and he has a crystal belly so he can see what's going on, how he digests the food and how they interact with his internal organs. So whenever he sees a plant, he whips it and somehow it's like a Vitamix juicer, it just <laughs> and he takes the juice or, or the herb, and then he sees the reaction of what's going on. And then he uh, writes down, is this a good tonifying herb, or is this a poison? Or if you eat this poison, what can you eat to counteract it? And so he has written a book, and it still exists uh, today in China. What you see here, is a um, dessert, and um, I would usually Chinese people call it medicinal food or medicinal dessert. Uh, even though it can be taken as a food, but it does have some sort of um, uh, beneficial aspect to it. We never, in Chinese medicine, we don't go to bed with cold feet because coldness will actually um, disturb our sleep. So if you find yourself having a hard time falling asleep, this might be something worth a try before you go to bed. And, and then massaging these points, because if you think about it, this is the opposite, polar opposite end of our brain. If you want to calm down your mind, massage the foot. This point, and then I can show you here, my model foot. It's called, the, it's the beginning point of kidney. Um, the first point of kidney. And in Chinese translation, some people have translated it as a bubbling spring or a bubbling fountain. And this is a big point that uh, martial arts use or Qigong use to ground themselves. And it's a big grounding point. And what you do to find it, it's if you divide the foot in thirds, it's the upper one third here, kind of in the middle, and you'll feel like a divot. And, and actually, Ask yourself, where does it feel like you're rooted? Where does your, the center of your foot feel? And that often is kidney one. Yeah. And then the second point is spleen one. Spleen one is the uh, first point of the spleen channel that um, will help with digestion. And it's kind of right by the toe here. And because it's so specific, and that is for acupuncture, but for a self um, care at home, you can just massage this big area and you might find it very tender. This point is not only good for stopping uh, busy thoughts, it can also help stop bleeding in some, in some cases. This is a remedy for dry cough. Um, dry and heat cough specifically, and caution that this is not for cough that are related to asthma or allergy where you have a lot of white copious phlegm. And actually if you eat this for that type of hot, it might make it worse. So, and that again goes back to how Chinese medicine categorizes everything and then we know how to target better. The apricot seed is bitter. It's slightly warm, and um, it helps to resolve um, cough and phlegm. The Chinese dates, as we talked about, is um, somewhat neutral in temperature property, and it calms the mind. So, for example, if you're giving this to a kid who you know been coughing up all night and they're a little bit fussy, this will kind of help them calm a little bit. And goji berry. Um, is also kind of slightly warm neutral. It has a lot of antioxidants and um, it's actually very good for improving vision. It's used a lot to, in um, improving vision formulas. 
and the white um, rock candy or rock sugar is um, a good flavoring and you actually sometimes will find it added in Chinese medicine because it Thomas Fai Chi and it somehow and I've done this test on myself I I made a, um, a decoction without white sugar, white rock sugar, and one with it. And I tasted the difference. The, the one with that just tasted like herb, and you know, it just kind of sits in your mouth. And with the one with white rock uh, sugar, it blends. It's almost like s it smooths out. And so and from then I realized, ah, that's why they're using it, because like, you know, the general and the chief and the servant, they all help each other to blend in and help um, to promote the health. What are, what yeah. are your proportions? Oh, enough to fill in the Asian bear. There's, um, there's not, and, and these, these are optional. You don't have to add them, but the very traditional one is just adding the um, white rock sugar. Mm. Yeah. And, um, so this is all I have for the tips for health, but uh, I'm willing to share some more. Yeah, go ahead. Why would somebody have a dry cough? Um, if I'm talking too much, <laughs> maybe I don't need one today. <laughs> yeah, and also... Or if the air is really dry, like in the winter? Yeah, yeah. A dry cough or um, sometimes from colds, you know, when you're getting better from a cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <coughs> Uh, s there's a couple points um, the, that you, or exercise you can do at home to relieve stress. And this is a point um, not for possibly pregnant women. Um, it's on top of your shoulder here. And, and a lot of times um, I see a lot of patients with tight shoulder in Chinese medicine, we say you carry a lot of responsibility <laughs> on your shoulder. And um, these two points have a descending effect. Um, so it kind of helps descend either, like relaxes you, or you know, you, if you push on them, you'll realize that whew, there's almost like a you know, relaxation feeling. So these two acupuncture points, you could do this at home. You know, if you're getting feeling a little tired, or you could press on them really hard, and it's very, very tender and achy. Um, another point is, I want to share with you is called the Si Shen Cong, the Four Spirit and Intelligence Point. It's on top of the head, and this morning I needled it on him. And these these four points help to increase concentration and enhance memory. So if you find, actually well, just demonstrate on my head. Okay, you look at the tip of the ear, you follow it up until you reach the center, kind of also, you know, by the nose. About an inch out in the front, side, and back. Those are the four points. So, Follow it here to the center and go back about an inch back, an inch forward, an inch to the side. These are the points for Shi Chong. And it's like an energy point? Yes, yes. Um, it's used a lot in um, different therapies. Uh, when we were in school, we we kind of massage each other and need all these points of just right before the finals, how our energy can concentrate. And there's also other usage for, um, for example, post-stroke patients. If they're paralyzed on one side or the other, we might direct the needle in a different angle. So um, there's a lot of, and, and if you cannot remember all these points, that's okay, just brush your hair. <laughs> There's a lot of um, acupuncture points here on the head and the scalp. Yeah, so those are the two things you can do at home. Okay, in summary, 
So we looked at various types of methods used in Chinese medicine, but let's not forget the key principle is to look at the person as a whole and making sure there is a balance and there is harmony. So some key points from today is um, prevention. So a lot of the food therapy that we eat or the Tai Chi or the Qigong that we do, those are ways of promoting healthy life. So we're not too late until we like reach a disease state. And learning about how to incorporate that into your daily life. And a similar, I mean, Tai Chi in a way is almost similar to Qigong, but um, there are different styles and movement. Actually, Qigong, yeah. Tai Chi comes from Qigong. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And, and all of them also intertwine with martial arts, and yeah, it's all one big family. <laughs> and then again, the key principle of balance. And moderation is also a key. <laughs> Some people say, wow, ginseng is so, so healthy. A ton is Fai Chi. Let's take more of it. But no. <laughs> you want to look at your co body constitution. If somebody is already like full of energy, you give them more. No, bad idea. <laughs> so in, in medicine, it's what's considered medicine is the dosage. If you eat a lot of good stuff, it might become a poison. So keep that in mind, moderation. OK, preview for next lecture. Do you know what temperature your foods are? So as we talked about today, the, you know, um, the pear is a cold type. Watermelon is a cold type. And we will cover more, and I'll, I'll provide the handout. And so, so when you kind of go to the grocery store next time, you might identify, because some of these are visual and, and feel. Yeah. Yeah. OK. And last one. Why having a siesta nap time at noon is important for your heart? We will talk about that um, next time. Uh, there is a um, Chinese bio clock that goes by every two hours. So 11 to 1, 1 to 3, and each clock hour, I mean the, the two hour segment, correlates to the meridian, correlates to a organ or um, intestine, whatnot. And, and what you do in those two times there are secrets to promote your health, and mm. so it's Is it's. It yes. <laughs> Did I spell that right? <laughs> A nap time. <laughs> yeah. So we'll talk about more, and so you'll find out when's a good time to go to bed, when's a good time to take nap, when is a good time to be doing mental activities, for example. So, well, well until next time. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Mm.